illness is kind of a part of life. People think, oh, we've got all these great drugs. There's a lot of patients out there who don't have good options. There's a lot of people out there suffering from things that may be more common or some things that may be not as common. And I think our vision is to really try and meet those needs. I think Roche's dream, it's pretty clear. We want to be the best for delivering medicines that really make a big impact. I mean, we want to rewrite medical textbooks in every field that we touch. We want to make sure that patients get their medicines um, as quickly as possible. Um, and we use the most innovative techniques and the most innovative medicines to make a difference to those patients' lives. We're now looking at what the patient's journey through their disease is and how we can support or change that patient, patient journey to make it a better one for them. One of the things that I2O is experimenting with is a lot of the trial to patient initiatives. And some of those initiatives include mobile nursing, telemedicine, uh, different ways that we can outreach. We're creating apps for our kids so that they can be engaged and think of the trial as more of a fun thing to, to do rather than a burden on them. Not all solutions will fit all studies, but I think it's, it's good to innovate, to try and mix things up a little bit, to try and engage a little bit of excitement within the team as well to see if there is a better alternative that you haven't thought of. I think if you look back to where we were a year ago, we were kind of small and, and figuring out our way and our pipeline has just exploded, if you will, in the last year. There's like no time to get bored with the pipeline because we've got things for very common diseases that are still big challenges. And we've also got a, a number of other interesting new diseases that we're trying to address. We've identified new important indications for Lucenis, which originally was approved for wet macular degeneration, but now also improved for diabetic macular edema, a leading cause of blindness. If you couldn't see before because you had a disease, and there's a drug now where you have an injection and now you can see, that's huge. That's so meaningful, it's crazy. All of us know people who suffer from asthma. And yet, with the studies under, for example, Lebrecuzumab that we're working with at the moment, the improvements, like we're going to, to really improve these patients' lives if these drugs work. The thing that's cool about Lebrecuzumab is that early on, um, collaborating with colleagues at UCSF, uh, the scientists here worked out that there was a, a protein circulating in the blood that seemed to correlate with the, with the prediction of response to our drug. If you can find something like this, you can really tailor your drug to the right patient, which means that you find patients that are going to benefit the most from your therapy and hopefully have fewer side effects. So it really allows you to customize your therapy for patients. With this uh, pipeline uh, successfully uh, brought to market, it can benefit uh, uh, millions of uh, patients globally. It's sort of weighty things we're doing at times, but we try to take the time and enjoy our colleagues, uh, celebrate our successes and, and celebrate our failures when we tried hard and we did the best we could and it didn't work. You know, we try to reward the effort and not the outcome. Clinical development and the patients that we serve, they are not static. Diseases don't take a break. They are evolving, they're changing, they're adapting. It's a constant arms race, right? It's us against the bugs. Uh, but I think uh, we may be able to get uh, at least a temporary advantage with some of the pop pipeline molecules coming up. Part of it is reminding ourselves that we don't need to just do what we've done in the past, but that we should take risks, that we can take risks, that we're encouraged to take risks, that we need to think is this the best way to manage a budget? Is this the best way to try and recruit patients? What's probably most exciting is looking at some of the rare diseases that we're going into um, and the impact that will have on patients, but also looking at uh, personalized healthcare. We already have a few examples where we are looking at personalized healthcare, but this is certainly the future of Roche Genentech, and I2O has the opportunity to play a really key role in that.